The octopus, a type of cephalopod, is a fascinating creature. It has three hearts and eight arms. Those arms also contain most of its brain, with 500 million nerve cells and real superpowers. Octopuses are highly intelligent. Depending on their environment, they can change their shape, color, pattern, and even the texture of their skin. They can turn into rocks, looking like they're covered in algae, or make themselves huge and turn completely red. At an UNAM University satellite campus in the Mexican coastal town of Cisal, biologist Carlos Rosas is researching the octopus's ideal living conditions. Results so far? The sensitive animal reacts dramatically to rising water temperatures by laying fewer eggs. This could become a problem if climate change progresses. We know today that the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico are warming because of climate change. We want to create models that can predict whether the number of octopuses will decrease in the future. There are still plenty of them here along the coast of the Yucatan, but that could change. Demand for the low-fat delicacy is rising worldwide, and in some Asian regions, they've already been overfished. For octopus catcher Antonio Koch in Cecil, business is better than ever this season. It's been insane, especially August and September and into October. It always depends on how long you want to work. I'm usually full by 1 p.m. and I earn around 500, 600 pesos. The people who stay out all afternoon make 2,000 or 3,000 pesos. But Antonio Koch is also worried about whether extensive fishing can go on forever. That's why he's working with the university's scientists to sell octopus raised in a breeding station instead of capturing them out at sea. It's an ambitious project, but it will work. Farming octopus is one of the biggest challenges facing the global seafood industry. Unlike salmon and shrimp, they're sensitive to captivity and die quickly. But the Mexican researchers have one advantage. The local species, the maya, is particularly robust. This one is already two months old. The maya octopus is a very pleasant species. For one thing, they have no problem being in these tanks together. They get along very well. And besides, they don't emerge from the eggs the females hatch as larvae, but as fully developed tiny octopuses. Other octopus species are born as paralarvae. At that stage of development, massive numbers of them tend to die. Here in Cisol, where the hatchlings skip the larval stage, they breed surprisingly well. The heart of the university station. Soon, new little Maya octopuses will emerge from these eggs. If you look closely, you can see small black dots, the tiny eyes of the baby creatures, and new eggs are already on the way again. We have 32 tanks here, and in each one there's a pregnant female. Now we're waiting for them to lay their eggs. The scientists capture the pregnant females in the open sea. They're just one year old and die after laying their eggs. They starve themselves to death, here in the breeding station as in the wild. But keeping octopuses in captivity, even if only at the end of their lives, is always a source of controversy. The animals are so intelligent that critics consider it morally wrong to confine them. Carlos Rosas sees things differently. 
We've anthropomorphized the octopus through movies and other stories that are spread. And that's a problem. In southern Mexico, the octopus is regarded as a resource. It's a source of income and food for many people in the village. In a moment, you'll see how delicious this is. The Koch family is having it for lunch today. Here in Yucatan, you'll be offered octopus everywhere you go. Also in restaurants. Sylvia Koch serves fried octopus with her escabeche sauce. In other Mexican regions, octopus is served in sushi, a popular dish in Mexico. The world's appetite is huge. Some 420,000 tons of octopus are eaten annually. Antonio and Sylvia Koch come to the UNAM University research facility every day and volunteer to help raise the octopuses. They're learning how to successfully breed and raise them in this artificial environment. 1.6 grams. 1.8 grams. The very small ones get stressed out very quickly. While the scientists focus on their research and collect data, Antonio Koch and his wife have now founded the Molusco del Mayab Cooperative to expand octopus farming commercially. The other catchers in the village were not very enthusiastic about the project at first. They said it was crazy, just a waste of time. They didn't believe in the project. Now, almost 10 octopus catchers are organized within the cooperative. With the help of support funding, they were recently able to finance their own site. The tanks are already in place, but they still need money to get things up and running. We want to expand our project so that we can increase our market, selling nationally and internationally. That's my dream, preferably starting tomorrow. This project could secure the future for many fishing families and perhaps become a model for other regions affected by overfishing and climate change.